So in this lecture, I'd like to find all the possible isomers of the heptane molecule, a 7-carbon alkane. So let's begin by defining what an isomer is. So isomers are compounds that have the same molecular formula but different structures. So whenever we try to find isomers of alkanes, it usually helps to have a systematic approach. And that's exactly what we use in this example. Here we have a set of four steps that we're going to follow to find our isomers. And in fact, we can always use these same steps whenever we're trying to find isomers of alkanes. So let's begin with step one. Now step one happens to be the easiest one, and you'll see why in just a second. Begin with the longest carbon chain. So what's the longest carbon chain of our heptane molecule? Well, it's simply heptane itself. So in step one, our first isomer is heptane itself. So here we have our heptane, and this is our first isomer. Let's go to step two. So in, in step two, shorten the chain by removing exactly one carbon from the end of our chain. So we remove this carbon and then we place that carbon to, onto a different position. So let's remove it. And now let's take that methyl group and place it onto the first position or the second position here. Now if we place it onto this position, we get back our heptane. The goal is to develop as many structural different uh, compounds as possible. So here is one more isomer. Notice that these two guys have the same exact molecular formula, but they have different structural uh, forms. So now let's take this methyl and place it onto this carbon, and we will get another isomer. So we place this methyl group here, and we get a third isomer. And notice if we draw one more guy, and then we place our methyl onto this position, this guy is exactly the same as this guy. And so this is not an isomer because these two guys have the same molecular formula and the same structural forms. So this is not an isomer, so let's remove this guy. So it looks like we're done with step two. Let's go to step three. So in step three, it says shorten the, car uh, the chain by removing two carbons, not one, but two. So now we're removing this carbon as well as this carbon. So we're developing a pentane molecule, and now we have two carbon atoms at our disposal, uh, methyl groups at our disposal. So let's first place the two methyl groups here. That's one isomer. Let's draw our pentane again. And I'll take one methyl, place it here. The second methyl, place it here. That's a second uh, isomer. Let's draw one more pentane. And let's place, let's leave this methyl here and place this methyl here. That's yet another isomer. So let's see if we can get more isomers. Let's leave, well that's, Let's actually take both of these guys and place them here. And let's take one more and place it like so. So all these guys have different structures but identical molecular formulas. So they're all isomers. So let's go to step four because we're essentially done here. If we rearrange them in some other way, we're going to get back uh, the same molecule as before. So let's go to step four. In step four, I have dot, 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 because we're simply removing not one or two, but three carbons from the end. So we're removing one, two, three. So here we have one, so we have one, two, three. And now we have three carbons at our disposal, three methyl groups. So let's place one here, a second one here, and let's place a third one here. And this concludes our isomers. We should have a total of nine. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So once again, these steps work for any alkanes. Whenever you're trying to find the isomers of alkanes, you follow these steps. You begin with the longest possible carbon chain, and then you keep removing a carbon atom, a methyl group, and reattaching it, forming our new isomers.